You are listening to the Speech Space Podcast, a podcast full of tips and resources for SLPs. I'm your host, Jessica Cassidy, and this is episode 26. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, we are going to be talking about dyslexia in this episode. So I always think it's a good idea to start off with a nice definition of a subject before we dive in. So dyslexia is a specific learning disability that is neurobiological in origin, and it's often characterized by difficulties with accurate and or fluent word recognition and by poor spelling and decoding difficulties. Now, I just want to emphasize these difficulties exist despite adequate instruction and absence of intellectual, sensory, and neurological difficulties. These students might have a family history of reading disabilities. Um, About 50% of individuals who have a parent or sibling with dyslexia will also have dyslexia. They might have difficulty learning letter names and sounds for successful decoding, and they might have a history of early speech sound disorders and language impairments as well. Now, say that you have a student who's showing signs of dyslexia. What is to be done? How do we assess them? So there's no one standardized test that specifically assesses for dyslexia, so we often need to use various measures for the assessment. So of course, we're going to look at language ability. As SLPs, we obviously need to see if there is a language impairment, and um, a good assessment to use here would be something like the self or the castle. We also need to look at phonological awareness and processing skills, and some tests that are good at doing that would be the um, comprehensive test of phonological processing or the Linda Mood auditory conceptualization test. We need to also look at word reading assessment and we need to look at real word reading and non-word reading. So pseudo word reading, also known as non-word reading, is useful because it requires a child to use phonemic decoding and prevents them from reading familiar words that they might have memorized. The Woodcock Reading Mastery Test or the Test of Word Reading Efficiency are two options that might be considered to assess this area. Nonverbal intelligence. Now, this type of testing is usually done by school psychologists. Uh, Some tests that they might use are the Test of Nonverbal Intelligence or the Reynolds Intellectual Assessment Scales or perhaps the Kaufman Brief Intelligence Test. And spelling is also an area that we need to assess as your students get older. A test for that would be the test of orthographic competence or the SPELL, which is the Spelling Performance Evaluation for Language and Literacy. Okay, so now say our student, it has been determined that our student has dyslexia. What is our treatment focus going to look like? As SLPs, what are some of the things that we can target in speech therapy? So we could target alphabet letter knowledge. We could target phonological awareness through things like rhyming, segmenting, blending, increasing awareness of sounds and syllables and words, uh, sight word knowledge, reading decoding, reading fluency, spelling, and vocabulary. So if you're wondering about specific treatment programs, I'll list some here and then I'll also link to them in the show notes as well in case you want to check them out. So one of the oldest approaches is the Orton-Gillingham, and that is an intensive sequential phonics-based system that teaches the basics, I'm going to say that part again, that teaches the basics of word formation before whole meaning. It's language-based, multisensory, and uses visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learning modalities. Another method is the alphabetic phonics program, and that is a multi-sensory curriculum that teaches phonics and the structure of language at both the elementary and secondary levels. It uses the Orton-Gillingham approach, and it teaches handwriting, spelling, reading, reading comprehension, and oral and written expression. Another program is the Wilson Language Training. They have uh, two separate programs. One is K through three called Foundations, and then they also have another program for fourth through 12th graders called Just Words. And then there is the Linda Mood Phoneme Sequencing, also known as LIPS, and that's also a multisensory approach um, that works on developing phonemic awareness. There's the Dyslexia Training Program, and that's a reading intervention program that uses direct and systematic instruction to teach reading and spelling 
and also has a strong emphasis on phonemic awareness and alphabetic code knowledge. And like in some of the other methods I've mentioned, this one also takes a multi-sensory approach and it targets phonemic awareness, phonics, reading fluency, vocabulary, and reading comprehension. And it's reported to be most effective for grades second through fifth. So that is just a basic summary of some of the programs that might be used for our students with dyslexia. There's a lot of them out there. But like I said, you can find links to those approaches that I just briefly described in the show notes. And before I go, I just wanted to quickly touch on a few compensatory methods for our students with dyslexia. One strategy that I really like is to suggest that the student listen to audiobooks or podcasts because that way they're still getting exposed to a variety of complex language structures despite their reading difficulties. In addition to that, they could also use a text-to-speech app and that can help bridge the gap to ensure that students are still getting the same vocabulary exposure as other students, although they might not be able to get it in the same way from reading. Okay, so that is it for me for today. Just a quick reminder that the cost of the digital SLP membership will be jumping up at the end of the month. So if you're interested in signing up, you'll want to go to thespeechspace.com forward slash digital SLP to do that so you can lock in your lower rate. And I also have a special promo code just for podcast listeners that's going on right now. So if you use the coupon code SAVE25, you can save 25% off of both the monthly and annual memberships. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, I would really appreciate it if you could take a brief moment to leave a five-star review on iTunes. That way I know that people are out there listening and that I should continue to create the show and continue creating content for these episodes. And additionally, it helps other SLPs like you be able to find this show on iTunes. Okay, guys, that is it for me for now. And I hope that you all have a wonderful week.